Greetings all. Well, you know, Americans are always on the move as far as that's concerned. I remember while I worked in the, uh, the nursery trade you know, in California that we would rate the height of how big a plant gets by uh, a seven year figure. How big does it get in seven years? Because nobody lived anywhere longer than seven years, and so that was the biggest they'd ever see it. Gracie gonna live longer than seven years around here, I'm sure. She don't want to go anywhere. She just come running in at me because she's all wet. That's about the third time today my cat got all wet. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're always moving around, and there have been trends for years now of Americans moving to where it's warmer and sunnier. These generally are the places where we like to go on vacation, you know, and so uh, the trend has been to the Sun Belt. Florida's population has increased enormously, so has Arizona, um, and so on over, uh, over the last 50 years or so. Uh, definitely during my lifetime I remember them advertising the retirement communities down in Florida you know on <laughs> on my Sunday TV shows when I was a boy so we, there the the general trend historically has been towards uh, sunnier drier warmer climates uh, most Americans are escaping the, the rust belt so to speak getting out of the the cold snowy areas where it rains a lot you know and, and all of that and uh, and getting down to places where uh, well or you might want to go on vacation and get yourself sunburned well now that isn't the only trend there is a more recent trend which is actually relocation due to climate change now this is rational i'd say there's a pretty good bet that as the climate on the planet continues to get crazier and crazier that there probably will be places where life is better than it is in other places because the weather just won't be as bad there now, if I was to extrapolate on that, I would say the general trend towards the Sun Belt over the years um, has been exactly the opposite of what most Americans would actually prefer in the long run, uh, because now it appears that the Sun Belt is getting really sunny. Yep, we're, we're starting to get, you know, ex extended periods of time with temperatures that don't drop under 100 degrees you know nighttime temperatures that don't drop and so on um, and so the those warmer drier sunnier areas are gradually now becoming places that are less livable than they once were uh, you know i i don't really think you can hardly exist in uh, Arizona or, or South Texas without having to have, uh, you know, air conditioning and, and basically staying inside your building uh, until winter comes. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, anyway, there, the, that was the general trend, but there is a, a newer tendency uh, that we're seeing people relocating to escape climate change and uh, there is some data out there indicating what sorts of areas might be better to live in uh, when weather gets wacky um, yeah there's par parts of the northeast for instance are starting to get uh, attention uh, these are the cooler uh, generally wetter areas you know uh, the upper Great Lakes. I lived in the upper Great Lakes for many years. Uh, now, I, I happen to love the area. Yeah, I, I think the Great Lakes are just great. Uh, <laughs> really, I, I grew up there. Um, 
really like the region um, but as far as being a place where people moved for climate no <laughs> there are a lot of reasons why you might say one to have lived in Wisconsin where I lived there are a lot of reasons yeah it's, it's good farming country so if you're a farmer that's a pretty good place to be especially the southern half of the state um, you know the price of real estate in general has not been that high I know Madison Wisconsin for a long time was considered to be one of the places where you could work a, a minimum wage job at McDonald's and own a home <laughs> yeah they say you know that kind of standard of living for how much you're making to how much you got to spend uh, that parts of the Midwest were really good for that stuff yeah so you don't want to get your dollar to go further that can be a good place to live um, you see I lived there for a long time and I have a lot of good to say about it uh, now <laughs> if that was the mindset that you were attempting to escape uh, by moving to that region I would warn you that we, you definitely want to get yourself above a line for Tornado Alley because the tornadoes seem to be getting worse and worse and worse as time goes on and so the central and the lower Midwest uh, these are pretty scary places uh, nowadays the wind speeds the amount of t damaging tornadoes that they're getting um, it's a lot uh, now you get further north you get closer to Lake Superior you know and up in that region they don't get tornadoes much now they do get a phenomenon called a downburst line wind and I stood through one of those where the wind gauge in Rhinelander Wisconsin only read to 180 miles an hour and snapped off <laughs> Yeah, because it was moving faster than that, folks. And so they get some hellacious weather, too. Uh, and I don't think winter is going away in the great north woods, either. So that's another consideration there. Uh, anyway, it sort of looks like the general historic trend towards the Sun Belt um, is not going to be doing anybody any good in the coming future here uh, it's not really going to be the most desirable place to sit down and live um, you can almost see you can see the microcosm of that here in Hawaii you know Hawaii has its wet and its dry sides just like the mainland United States this is wet and its dry sides now the wind flows are opposite in Hawaii over what they are in the mainland uh, general airflow in the mainland r runs from the west to the east at this latitude uh, in Hawaii uh, tropical cancer our wind flow is reversed that in general it flows from the uh, uh, from the east to the west but the the phenomenon the reaction is essentially the same you know you, you get uh, uh, the Rocky Mountains in the middle of the United States here we have Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea right in the middle of this island and as the winds coming in from this direction the the rain drops on one side of the mountains and then it shadows off the other sides of the mountains the same kind of occurs in the mainland too as weather moves up along the Rocky Mountains and lifts and uh, what water tends to fall on the eastern side of the mountains more so than it does on the western side of those mountains uh, so you get a it's kind of a similar situation Hawaii is a bit of a microcosm people's judgment and looking at the data and doing research about is there a better place to live with climate crazy huh um, one of the things is going to dictate how the future will be it's insurance companies your home insurance companies well i tell you if there's anybody out there right now any organization who is on top of climate change it's your home insurance companies they are so tired of paying out enormous premiums due to climate damage um, they got their thumbs 
well on what's actually happening because you you want to measure how bad climate change is just go ahead and measure the amount of money that the insurance companies are having to pay out to repair the damage yeah so now the next time the uh, uh, tornadoes come through your trailer park <laughs> and demolish everything and then the insurance company drops in and says we're not going to pay for that anymore yeah that they they just won't renew your policies this is happening in florida all insurance companies are pulling out of the state um you know or the ones that are remaining are raising the premiums to such an extent uh that it's you know it's going to get ridiculous well we're starting to see that same sort of thing happen uh due to tornadoes and floods yep anywhere near floodplains tornado alleys uh places like that uh you're gonna see insurance companies pulling out they just don't want to have to pay for that mess uh, the next time your trailer park blows away into the next county you might consider rebuilding any more practical style i mean i've been kind of a you know a, progressive i guess you could say creative sort of a character when it comes to uh you know living type uh, buildings domicile how your house is built how you uh, you know what you do with it and so on uh and i've long been an advocate of earth sheltered passive solar in most of the eastern united states and we do have a few homes out there that have been built that way but by and large not very many yeah i had a few in my neighborhood back in wisconsin um you know if the trailer blows away and the insurance company don't want to pay anymore probably the best thing to do is start digging underground because if you in in tornado alley there you know kansas ohio iowa nebraska illinois minnesota you know missouri the places like that I don't understand why people continue to build uh, wood frame stick built houses on the surface of, of the land uh, after tornadoes have come through and destroyed whole towns. Why don't they change the building styles? Is that just so darn progressive? I, <laughs> you know, really, it's your life, your home, uh, yeah, especially, you know, with, with uh, things getting hotter all the time. Earth shelter is a good idea because then you have the ambient earth temperature inside your building. Yeah, you're not having to put out so much heat and cooling. Um, the buildings are easier to heat. They're easier to cool. So you're more comfortable when uh, weather is erratic. Um, if they're built so that they are essentially underground other than the 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 main south side of the building to gather solar energy then would be glazed predominantly um, triple glazing ideally with the super insulated shell that's buried beneath the earth sod covered um, and if you wanted to put uh, steel shutters in front of your windows you're, you're probably taking assault from the, your 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 uh, <laughs> your neighbor's shingles heading straight into your front yard without taking out your glass yeah you could actually shutter these things automatically there's a lot of a lot of things that can be done to make the buildings far more intelligent safer and far more comfortable to live in cheaper to live in <laughs> uh, yeah, when you when you go for passive solar, you're going to reduce the amount of uh, of cooling and heating that you, you're going to need, and so then of course that means that oh, if you reduce the amount of energy you need, maybe using alternative energy sources that are not carbon might possibly be more feasible. It's I'm I'm told that this is totally unfeasible the idea of switching uh, to uh, non-carbon emitting uh, energy sources i keep hearing it over and over and over and over and over and over again well i'm a guy who switched it works great i love it yeah and nothing special about me here you know the only uh, advantage i have is that i do not have the huge heating and cooling bills 
the most you would have if you lived in the mainland. Uh, climate here is milder. Uh, don't let that get around because right now, you know, uh, Lahaina's burned to the ground. We have fires over here in Kahala. Uh, I understand that there were some homes that were endangered. Um, I don't know uh, the, the exact status at the moment of what's going on, but we're burning over here too. But we're burning on the west sides. We're burning on the dry sides of the islands, which of course are the sides of the islands that have always attracted uh, tourism and they've attracted, you know, retirement from people from the mainland, you know, that want to live in that kind of permanently sunny stuff. Well, uh, even if you weren't planning to raise food, which will become short with climate change and so raising food i think is a really good idea but it's not essential if you get the money you can buy your food uh you know it'll it'll be out there for those of you who have the bucks to pay for it uh, but you may find yourself just hopelessly endangered uh just for living fires sweeping through you know wind blowing um so all sorts of possibilities as far as why living in the wonderfully splendid permanent sunshine areas of the world uh it's not gonna be so good anymore it's not such a good choice you know, greece had a nice sunny warm dry climate they're having a great time over there right now it's burning to the ground california great warm sunny dry climate i lived there for 25 years <clears throat> i can attest to that burning it's burning and it's too hot too same in greece every place like that has the potential to become the new sahara i know that living here in puna um boy i <laughs> I've had people tell me, oh yeah, I, I like Hawaii, but man, how do you live over there in that Puna site? It rains all the time. Yeah, I, uh, generally speaking, um, Puna is dissed <laughs> because of the clouds and rain we have on this side of the island. Uh, well, when it comes to climate change, fires, droughts, heating, well, you could live in a better place than one that tends to be damp, cooler, rainier. So I guess if one place is better than another, probably places that are naturally cooler, so a little higher elevation, a little northern in latitude maybe, you know, and places that are known to generally have more precipitation more cloud and rain than other places nearby those are the ideal locations in the coming future those cloudy rainy areas that you don't want to go on vacation in in 1958 okay yeah that, that's probably where we're headed i think well i'm so glad i live here where it rains more than it does most places in the united states yeah Lahaina burned to the ground last night. It's raining here. We're not far away from each other. Kahala is even closer and it's burning too. But it's raining here. Hang loose. Good luck.